I think the dairy, getting over dairy is probably the hardest thing for people to do, particularly cheese. That seems to be the last hurdle. I hear this from people all the time. You know, I go, I go vegan if it weren't for the cheese. Um, certain dairy products are a lot easier. Things like heavy cream or milk, there's so many alternatives available already. Heavy cream, all you need to do is puree cashews and make cashew cream, and it works perfectly in every recipe. Uh, I have a recipe for your own very fluffy whipping cream that whips up just like heavy cream in my new book, for example. But cheese is definitely the last hurdle. And there's so many varieties of cheese, not just the kind that, you know, not the crafts, not just the craft singles or cheddar cheese or Monterey Jack, but the really, really fancy exotic French style cheeses as well that you might want to have with a glass of wine on a weekend. So there's such a range of cheese that people, people are addicted to cheese. Uh, for the flavor, for the fat, and for the case of morphine, which is the opiate substance in cheese that makes it so very hard to give up. You know, I think the cheeses that I have developed that we make at Miyoko's Kitchen really help people make that transition. At least that's what people tell me. People say, wow, I can now go vegan. Uh, we have a range of cheeses. You know, we want to fill the entire cheese case with a huge variety, everything from the very simple melty cheeses that you would throw into a sandwich to the, the, utter, the utmost gourmet sandwiches that you'd want to enjoy with a glass of wine. Um, you know, we've got buffalo mozzarella, we've got different cheese sauces, um, you name it, we hope to be able to make it. You know, I get this question a lot. People ask me how close are they to traditional dairy cheeses. And there was actually a blogger who brought in a certified cheese professional to try all of our cheeses and she raved about them. So whether or not they are an exact replica of a dairy cheese or not, I don't know, but I do think they provide the same sense of satisfaction and functionality. And I think that's really what people are looking for. I think it's really important to have an earthy connection with food for Thousands of years, food has brought cultures together, has brought people together. And the more we are actually connected with the hands-on, handcrafted aspect of food, the more real it is, the more love you can put into it, the more, the less you're opening up a box and just making something quickly, the more you can make things from scratch, from things that grow from the earth, the more we can connect with people. I really do believe it's what brings people together. Um, there are societies where people still make everything from scratch, whether it's their own wine or pressing their own olive oil or grinding their own flowers, making their own pasta. And the more we can do that here in our own lives, I think the more beauty there is in what we create because it's alive, because it's real, because you can put real love and real nurturing into that food that you're going to serve people. And it brings people together and it excites people. People want their own hands in food. I see it all the time. I mean, the more I teach people how to do things easily, I mean, the, the biggest fear they have is, oh my God, I'm gonna be in the kitchen all day long. And, but what I've learned over the years is that there's actually a lot of tricks that you can do um, to make your cooking experience not only fun, but really, really easy. And it, you know, it's, a lot of people resort to processed foods or opening up cans of beans because they think it's easier. Well, it's not necessarily. If you learn some fundamental tricks to cooking, then you can have that made from scratch experience without slaving in the kitchen all day long and you know what's in your food. You know exactly what you've put in there because you put it in there. A really easy one is that a lot of people love to bake from scratch, but they think it's a lot of trouble. So why not make your own baking mixes, whether it's a pancake and biscuit mix or a waffle mix or a cake mix or, or whatever. If you make a lot of one type of mix and you have it in your pantry at all times, whenever you need to whip up something for your kids or for yourself, you just pull that mix out, mix it with some alternative milk and you've got anything from pancakes to waffles to cupcakes. So that's a really easy trick. Um, you know, the ketchup idea is really, really easy. Just throwing together ketchup in 30 seconds. Uh, you can make your own um, meat substitutes in large quantity, and then you can freeze it. So you've got some sort of easy, healthful, wholesome meat substitute to use whenever you want. Um, 
you can make your own, what I call my uh, easy cheat method jam that doesn't use a lot of sweetener. You can make it in about 10 minutes and then you can keep it frozen. So you've got jam available that's fresh at all times when at the height of the, the fruit season, you can pick a lot and make a bunch. Um, so those are some of the, um, you know, the, the easy cheat methods that I've got.